everyone, I'm Jay and this is the Camden Stitch. Hi, thanks for joining me today. I am here to talk about Me Made May and the things that I made in May. Um, my pledge for Me Made May was that I would address my UFO situation. I am a very good starter, but I'm not a very good finisher. Um, so unfortunately, I do tend to end up with boxes and boxes of UFOs. I did follow through with my pledge and I did finish quite a few UFOs in May, but unfortunately there's still loads and loads to go through. I've decided that what I need to do is either resign myself to the fact that some projects don't work out and just put them in my textile recycling bags, which I take to H&M every couple of weeks. Oh, if you don't do that, it's a great scheme. They give you a £5 voucher and the, uh, the voucher is for £5 off when you spend £25, which I think is quite good value. So I get all my t-shirt basics from H&M and I actually finish up with way more vouchers than I can ever use. but. I think it's a good scheme to get your textiles recycled anyway so I either need to decide that that is what I'm going to do or I need to stop leaving projects halfway through and see them through till the end I am fairly good in that I will return to projects if things have gone wrong I will return to them um, but there are certain projects that just are never going to work out like for instance I made in some shorts and they were too small and I made I'm such an idiot I cut three pairs and it wasn't until he tried them on and I was, I'd was i nearly finished all three of them. So I've got three pairs of cotton shorts that are um, a large instead of an extra large and I just don't know what to do with them. I think I'm just going to have to accept that some things just need to go in the recycling. Or I need to actually finish the projects that can be rescued. So I'll just run through what I made in May. Um, I started May with this dress that you might recognise because I've mentioned it before in some other vlogs. I'll insert a couple of photos. It's my Tilly and the Buttons Megan dress and it's the one that I've had big, big fitting issues with. Um, and really my fitting issues with this dress have held up a lot of my making in May um, because I had planned a lot of dresses based on this dress. I really, really like the style of it. I like where the waist falls. It's an empire waist. I've on the ones I've made, I've flared them out to be a little bit more A-line than they are in Tilly's pattern. Um, but I really love the style of them. And I've got a box full of dresses that I'd planned to make it with different versions of the Megan bodice. Uh, but because I've not been able to sort out the fitting issues for the Megan bodice, I think I've made five or six twirls of it now and haven't got it right. Um, it's kind of stopped me progressing. Now this one I made with a Peter Pan collar. Um, and unfortunately when I tried it on it was so tight on my bust that the whole shoulder area actually stood proud um, and so the collar itself was stood about cent a centimetre up from my neck um, and I just thought to myself actually I can't I won't be happy wearing this I'll never wear it so I took out the the collar which I just kind of painstakingly understitched and everything and it's been in the box by my sewing table waiting for me to decide whether or not I redo the collar make the collar smaller and have a go at sewing it back on or whether I just um, take in the neckline and make a, a, a fresh facing for this I could even finish it with bias tape couldn't I right decision made that is what I'm going to do I am going to take some um, I've already put some darts in the neckline, um, shoulder darts, no, they're called neck darts there, aren't they? Um, I'm going to in increase the size of those and then I'm going to finish the neckline with bias tape and then it'll be done and I'll have my dress and it won't be exactly like I envisaged it but I can put a Peter Pan, Pan collar on something else, can't I? Um, because that's really been holding me up. The now I mentioned it was tight on the bust. This dress has, they're called dart tucks, and what, so what they are is, a, instead of a bodice dart, it's actually like a pleat that then, that is then released at the end. Um, so what I did was I released them a little bit more to give my bust a little bit more room, and I think it will be okay now. Um, in one of the many, many twirls that I've made of this, I've done a full bust adjustment and taken it down a size, but 
the twirls are still not working, what I need to do is actually make a, a bodice block for myself, forget the Megan dress, and just use the same lines, just make a an ordinary bodice block, put the dark tucks in, and uh, attach an empire waist skirt, etc., and make something very similar. But I probably need to abandon that pattern. I did actually email Tilly and ask, about it and I have checked my junk mail a few times but there hasn't been anything back from her that was about two weeks ago and I'm a bit disappointed at that because they're expensive patterns um, the big four do have helplines that you can ring not that I ever would bother really um, but I kind of thought that indie patterns were good at giving you that kind of in-depth help um, and I've never really asked for it before. I've just always thought, if I can't make it fit, that's my problem. Um, but because I've had such issues with this particular pattern, I did think that it was worth asking. I'm a bit disappointed that I've not heard back. On the subject of finishing off makes, you might remember my Triumphs and Disasters video where I talked about this um, wrap dress that I tried to make into, it was a McCall's jumpsuit, and I tried to make the play suit version. Uh, with the shorts and it looked absolutely appalling on me. I was cleaning out my sewing space and I came across this and thought you're just gonna have to throw it away but a couple of hours later I was going through my phone photographs looking for a photograph of something completely different and I came across this and I actually took a screenshot of this it's one of those endless ads that come up in your Instagram feed and they're always for kind of quite random things but I saw this thing and thought oh that's pretty cool you know easy to replicate I like spots I like floral I like leopard print anyway I was scrolling through I saw this and I thought do you know what I could put a leopard skin a leopard print skirt on this or a polka dot skirt on this and it might look like that dress and I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, so watch this space and we'll see whether or not it ends up a terrible, terrible mess. Um, but I have got quite a lot of leopard print jersey left over from a different project that was really cheap and I had loads of it. So yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Um, moving on to my other makes, this one has been sitting on my, um, on the back of my sewing chair, which is where my half finished projects live, um, for months. I made it on a whim back in the winter. I just thought I want to sew a comfy knit dress and I've got this gorgeous drapey jersey. I think it's from Colville, quite a long time ago. Absolutely love it. The flowers are in this sort of chevron arrangement and I was holding it up to my body and I thought that would look really cool if you placed the flowers kind of strategically. I mean, Yes, you could make the point that I've got flower boobs and like maybe, you know, I've got flower muff. Um, actually, it's gotta be called Lady Garden, this dress, doesn't it? Come on. So, my Lady Garden dress, um, but I really like it. I think that I, what I wanted was to have the black fall around my sides because I thought it would look quite um, flattering um, to emphasize my waist a bit and I really like it. it's full length dress I shall post some pictures of it but it's been on the back of my chair because I hadn't attached the neckband and arm bands and it was a really stupid little job that actually when I sat down to do it it took me five minutes and I'd got a finished dress um, so that was just a, an easy dress the project that I did for the summer and I really like it my knit dress is McCall's M7432 and it was dead is it? Yeah, it's a learn to sew one. It was really, really so quick and easy. I can't fit this one on the mannequin because it's a jumpsuit, but I um, did talk about it quite a lot in one of my other videos uh, because I was wearing it, I think. Um, I made this um, simplicity jumpsuit and I just think that the picture on the front was so uninspiring. I've had this jumpsuit for ages, but this picture just put me off. But anyway, I made a few modifications. I lowered the V-neck line and I made the legs a whole lot wider so they're really quite flary and I think with this length leg sorry with this width leg you could easily make it, them into collot jumpsuits and I have actually made some other ones which are slightly more pegged in the leg but I was a little bit disappointed with these so I made them in this coral poplin um, 
because I was going to a festival at the beginning of June and the weather was forecast to be very hot and I wanted something cool to wear um, and I had this um, polka dot poplin in my stash it's actually from Fabricland it's really nice really lightweight um, and I knew that this jumpsuit was an easy sew and I thought it'd look great in this um, but I was really disappointed because it just didn't fit as well as the other one and I have no idea why when I originally made this I cut it in a size small on the top grading to a medium on my hips which was what was recommended obviously uh, big four patterns have quite a lot of ease but um, I wanted it to have quite a lot of ease because you know it's a loose fitting jumpsuit and it was made to be comfy and to be something to slob around the house in um, that size was too small I recut it for this version in a size extra small on the top um, size small on the waist I think I still graded out to a medium on the hip because I need that for my booty um, and it was too small well not too small slightly uncomfortably snug I did wear it but I didn't insert the elasticated waist and I was very unsure about it but uh, what should happen so I was walking down um, Camden Road towards Camden Town and a lady came up behind me at the traffic lights we were waiting to cross and she said I love your jumpsuit and I'd been saying to me you know I don't know about it does this look all right does this look all right um, so sometimes when that happens it's almost like the universe is smiling on you giving you a pat on the back and saying you do look all right um, so I made some mods on this I made these little I don't know what you call them tabs or something um, just to pull in the top of the straps and make it look a bit a bit like sort of bows um, I kept the neckline fairly low obviously as I mentioned I left the elastic out on the waist but it looked okay it didn't look too kind of uh, I don't know Humpty Dumpty or whatever you'd call it <laughs> it looked nice and I think I made the legs a little bit shorter and uh, a little bit slimmer and rolled them up I haven't actually hemmed them properly because I just wore them rolled up when I went out um, so I'm not sure about this one whether or not I will um, make any adjustments to it I think that there was an issue with the seam allowances that I couldn't that I couldn't let it out any further it could have done with a tiny more room, a bit of room in the crotch curve, but because I'd clipped into the crotch curve, I couldn't release any more of the seam allowances because obviously the clip would have made a hole. Now, somebody said, when I talked about clipping crotch curves on Instagram, somebody said that they don't clip crotch curves because of the wear and tear that you get in that area. Obviously, it's a seam that takes a lot of strain. I do normally sew crotch curves with a triple stitch um, because I, I kind of thought that that would reinforce it you know the triple stretch stitch but obviously I thought if you use it on a woven then surely it's just like doing three lines of stitching um, but I don't know what if you can't clip into it then how do you release that seam because you've obviously got the seam allowance is going around a curve and it's stretching and I've had it before that it can kind of pull into you so please let me know downstairs what um what you do on whether you clip crotch curves or how you deal with them oh, that would be very helpful the next makes oh it looks like a nighty like that there we go just realized how filthy it is on the neckline it needs a wash um the next makes are my fiber mood mirror dresses and i am so pleased with this pattern i really love it so much if you look back in some of my other so what's new vlogs i do mention fiber magazine fiber mood magazine i really really like it um it's a sewing pattern magazine like La Maison Victor or Berda but I just really like the patterns that they have in there it's for me they're just slightly more my style um, it comes out once every two months and it's ten pounds you, you do get it marginally cheaper if you subscribe but it's still quite quite a big outlay but for me I get more patterns that I like in there than I do in you know the other the other ones that I've mentioned although I buy them anyway because basically I'm a bit of a mug somebody tells me that it's sewing and I hand my money over like an idiot anyway so this pattern is called Mira M-I-R-A and it is a loose dartless bodice um, with 
just one tier underneath you can put more than one if you want and I put two and I added oh no actually sorry the pattern does come with two layers of ruffles I think yeah it does the pattern itself has a slightly flared sleeve uh, this was the first one I made this was my toile I cut a size 32 and um, did a full bust adjustment on it using a tutorial from Helen's closet uh, which was very helpful um, and it fits me fine but I do fear that it is maybe just a tiny smidge tight so for this one I made a size 34 and did a full bust adjustment according to my uh, measurements I should have made a size 36 but because I've sort of concluded that I'm small around the shoulder area it seems to be easier to cut a smaller size and do an FBA than um, cut the same size and take ease out of your shoulder area which I'm not don't really know what I'm doing yet as regards that so um, this is the dress that I made from a tablecloth and I really really like it I think of all my makes that I've made in sort of April May time these are the two that I've worn the most because they're just really my style the only thing I forgot to do on this was the pattern itself doesn't have any pockets so what I did was I took three inches off the top ruffle so that the pockets would fall at the right point on the bottom ruffle um, but I forgot to add the three inches to the bottom ruffle when I tried this on I realized that actually it's kind of tunic length rather than dress length so I have to wear this one with leggings or jeggings or whatever I can't wear it just with tights because um, the minute I kind of bend over you can see my bum um, but yeah I really like this dress and I hope to make it in a couple more fabrics I think it works really well in cotton but also in lighter fabrics this is a very light sort of uh, gauzy poly cotton but I think it would work great in viscose anything with quite a lot of movement I'm just going to show you the nice little details on this so I added a pink button that picks out the pink in the flowers I finished it with this binding that I'd got in my stash and I just think that the pink binding and the little pink hair loop that I used and the pink button um, I really love that I think that that's worked out I think it looks cute I'm not going to show you my next make um, because I just concluded from the last time I wore them that they were too horrendous f to ever be seen by anyone who sews ever again. I will link to my review of my quick sew dungarees. They were just a nightmare. Have a look at my review and you can hear me rant about that pattern and about my sewing experience in all its gory glory. Um, so I made those and that was two weekends of my life that I will never get back. Uh, you may have seen this one on other vlogs. It is my style vintage uh, 1973, I think, maternity dress. I didn't put the ties on the back that you can use to cinch your waist in because for me, if you're going to make a trapeze dress, then it should hang outwards. I don't really see the point of making a tra trapeze dress and then saying, oh, but I still want to define my waist. I mean, you've probably realised that my sewing style is I do like dresses that go like that. Um, I think sometimes I dress like an overgrown toddler, but that's just the style that I like. Um, obviously, this one is a little bit out there, but it was great fun to make. It was a very nice, easy sew, and obviously you get to put on all these fun details like the rack on the pocket and the collar. Um, the collar was a little bit tricky but I've done quite a lot of collars lately and I feel like it's a skill that I'm developing and learning and it goes easier and easier every time which is nice isn't it when you feel like you're actually progressing on something. Next stop for me is button plackets. Um, I'm still not very skilled on them at all. Um, so that's it from me. Uh, the only other thing I made was I made a twirl of a t-shirt for Ian. I know it sounds ridiculous making a twirl of a t-shirt but I've had a lot of problems making patterns for Ian and then them coming up the wrong sides and it's really frustrating and a lot of the t-shirts he wears are just kind of then they're, they're so no frills they're just like the um, like a band t-shirt you know they're made by Fruit of the Loom or Gilsan or whatever that's the style that he wants the most basic t-shirt anyway I found this pattern and it is it's another quick sew one my, my nemesis but um, it seems to be fine I did 
uh, I made it up in this floral fabric with that I had left over in my stash and I left it hanging up in his bedroom, he was out and he got back and he said, why have I got a lady's blouse in my room? And I said, don't worry, I uh, just want you to try it on and see if it fits okay. And it worked, do you know, it was such a cunning plan because I got the feeling that I'd done something nice for him by making him a t-shirt, but in actual fact, I got to keep the t-shirt. So, uh, but anyway, that's so that I can make him a proper one up in some fabric that he's actually chosen. And I've been using this uh, uh, to slob around the house in and I like it very much. You probably recognise it because it's the same fabric that I made um, my Heidi Klum rip-off dress in. All right, that's all for me today. Please give me a thumbs up and please press the subscribe and the notification bell and that way you'll hear every time I release a new vlog. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.